Hey, how you doing, Wayne? Uh, I bumped into you, and I've been watching your videos. I dream, Dreams of Wires on YouTube. Yep. You're doing a lot of demos, uh, as well as your own stuff, for the AJH synth. Yep. And uh, I heard this, and I thought, oh, that's nice. I'll ask Wayne whether he could tell me what's going on here. Well, we've got a few things going on. At the moment, I've got a bit of a combination between a choir-like sound that I've made by putting two square waves, oh, sorry, two sawtooths from a VCO through the wave swarm down here. It basically multiplies the, the sawtooths and creates a really thick, rich you know, timbre. And then from there, I'm going into the fixed filter bank. And just by raising a couple of frequencies, it's allowed me to create a really choir-like sound. And that's just constantly droning. It's going into an open that's VCA. Nice. And then over the top of that, I've also got this just basically noise coming from the entropic boom up here, which has got its own built-in low-pass filter. And that's going into the That's very the next J &J, isn't it? That's got oh, that yeah. sort of yeah. super phase. That's well, the next I mean, this can do the, the sort of um, small stone, you know, sort of like four-stage phaser. It can really like nail that kind of sound, that really kind of quite simple phaser. But because you've got these extra stages, it can just really, really go way beyond it in terms of the, the sort of tones it can create. Oh, nice. Yeah. And you've got, you've got a sequence as well somewhere. Yeah. This is basically a mini mod voice doing the sequence, and the mini mod voice is basically it's based on the original mini mod, the RA mod mini mod, the first version of it, the, the one that people sort of you know desire more, but obviously slightly more rare and expensive, and you know most of us are never going to have one. So it's directly based on that rather than the later version of the mini mod, and because it's modular, obviously a mini mod was. It was a set piece in with it put into modular, you can do absolutely anything with it. But at the moment, I'm just using it to do a really standard, obvious sequence. So, this is all three VCOs going into the transistor ladder filter down here. And you've got the dual contour generator, which is has exactly the same behavior as the original mini mode. And into the VCA, which you can. Does that do the, the, the classic burn? The Got the, it's got the VCA burn. Well, it has if you switch it in. You've even got jumpers on the back to make it behave differently, so you can change the jumpers over and make it a lot dirtier. You can get really like, good sort of overdrive out of it. And you can also, with a filter to some extent, by driving the input sort of way beyond sort of, you know, oh, it yeah. really starts to, starts to grind into it. But I've actually got, I think I've got the, yeah, I've got the game switch in a down position at the moment, which means it's driving the, the ladder filter a little bit. So if I pull it up, that's yeah. more like standard ladder filter behaviour. Ladders, the, the thing about the ladders is that, I mean, it's when they burn like that, there's yeah. just so much water. It sort of adds a bit of the bass that the, the, the yeah. resonance loses, right? It just adds a bit of punch to it as well. It, it really kind of like hits you. But you can go way beyond that with a VCA. So the gain switch here is, is an option because you've got, you can change the, the jumper settings on the, on the back of the VCA and you can drive the, the, the ladder filter as well. What the gain switch does is it allows you to connect to them, so you've got a convenient switch to, to switch that increased level on and off. But on the gain switch, on the, on the, the VCA, it makes a massive difference. And if I demonstrate that, I'll have to severely reduce the volume of it because it gets, it gets really loud. So that's just normal VCA. And that's with a gain switch on a VCA. Oh yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah. I'll just mute them, yeah. Oh yeah, you can hear the burn, double burn. Yeah, it's, it, it absolutely, I mean, really creates a really quite hard distortion when you're driving both of them together. It, it, it's just totally unrecognisable sound, but still really warm and it's still got that sort of, that sort of mode clout to it. Nice. Yeah, that's that's essentially it, really. And I've also got a ring modulator down here as well. I've got two VCOs going into the ring mod, and the ring mod's based on the old EMS circuit from the, the Symphony and so on. So if I take that down and then... And I've got the dual RVG 
modulating the pitch of one of the VCOs and it's also triggering an envelope generator and this thing was an old EMS unit as well which is now rare as hen's teeth and you know probably very expensive to buy and this provides two random voltages it's only using one at the moment just to one VCO but interestingly it's also got this time vary control right so retrig effectively right yeah so you can keep the clock speed really regular oh that's got some low sub in it yeah and with mobby so you get to a certain point where you, you take the take the speed down to such a point they eventually conk out which is just what the original done it's copied the exact same behavior and it can be switched on and off and it can be triggered externally from a gate signal or you can even use a gate signal on this to trigger other things like at the moment this is triggering the the dual the DHADSR over here and then that's just adding extra envelopes to the, the picture the, of the VCO that's nice so it's like really sort of vintage really rich ring mod sound that you know I mean ring mods I think when I first heard of a ring modulator I didn't realize there'd be that much difference between the different kinds of ring mod but it's like a true analog ring mod which is very different from the sort of digital ring mods even on the Entropic Doom there's a ring mod on this as well and it's a it's a kind of very sort of it's a digital ring mod so it's it, it, the sound it produces is utterly different yeah but the sound on the on the ring SM it's that really rich really sort of like 70s kind of tone which is just the, exactly the thing I was looking for before I, before that came out nice and the ring sm doubles as a mixer cp3 mixer and also um sub bass generator a ah, lot of stuff going on there wayne thank you so much when, so when's your next video out for uh, your own channel oh. do you get time to work on anything if i get time yeah that's that's really the problem at the moment i think i was just struggling to get people to to find it and you know not many views particularly when i went to modular People love the self-contained instruments. They're not, you know, weren't so keen on the modular stuff. But it's a trade-off, really. For me, I just, I, I really, I really love this system. I mean, I'm working with Alan now because I'm a fanboy, basically. Right. I, I, when these come out, I just got into modular. I bought some stuff, and I saw this, and I thought, oh no, like, how am I gonna, how am I gonna cope with all this other gear that I've got? And I ended up just selling everything and gradually building up the system, and then. You know, started working on videos with Alan and yeah, they're great videos. But yeah, I still want to do the do the dreams and why stuff and some more of the cure the the albums as well. Thank you so much, Wayne. Yeah, when I get the time. Cheers. Thank you. <laughs>